What is going on, guys? Welcome back to another video. So if you've been paying attention to the NHL world or this page in the last 24 hours, you probably saw that Frank Saravalli has said that Trevor Zegers' name has been floated out a lot in trade rumors by Pat Verbeek to other teams. He was number four on Daily Faceoff's goddamn updated top 25 trade board. And although he's hurt right now, I don't think it's that serious of a long-term injury. I think it's just a couple of games. And I think this summer, Zegers will be looked at to potentially get traded. I don't think it's going to happen in season considering he's making $5.75 million for an actual team that's probably going to want to win now to get him in their salary cap structure. That's a tough thing to do. Obviously, the Ducks aren't going to be retaining any money on a Trevor Zegers potential trade. But I think this summer when teams can allocate and space out their cap properly they have some salary cap to shed or do all that i think he could get traded so we're going to run through some of the hypothetical trades that you guys sent in on instagram i asked you guys you guys sent it i think there was like 70 or like 80 goddamn submissions i absolutely love you guys i have 17 i've cut them down to 17 we're going to go through them right now these are the best of the best in my opinion some of them that can maybe actually make sense and potentially go down and up first we got Zegris heading to Colorado. This comes to us from Isaac for Bowen Byram in a second round pick. I, I I like it. I like it considering Colorado needs that second line center. Ryan Johansson just, just hasn't really panned out. He hasn't been horrible, but definitely not a legit second line center on a contender. And you look at it, both of these guys are pretty low in value right now. 2019 picks that looked like in 2021, 2022, they were going to be future superstars. But Bowen Byram, only 12 points in 39 games this year. Zegris, 7 in 20. They both not looked very good this year. So maybe you swap them. Change of scenery. I do think Zegris has higher trade value because obviously he does play center. He is a forward compared to Byram, who has not been able to stay healthy throughout his entire career for the most part. This season he has stayed healthy, but last year and previously has dealt with serious injuries. So I think this does make sense. Do I think it's going to happen? Probably not, but it's a decent trade. Next up, we got from Lennon Collins 16. We got to New York for Lafreniere in a second round pick. I, I, before the season, I could have maybe seen this with the way Lafreniere has played. He has 25 points in 39 games. Him, Trocek, and Panarin have formed a top 20, maybe even top 15 league a line in the entire league. I don't think it's going to happen because you look at it. Yeah, Lafreniere's really came out of his shell. Do I think he's going to end up being a superstar? No. I still think Zegris does have probably more potential than Lafreniere just overall as a playmaker. But Lafreniere is playing so well and has fit so well into that line. And he's only making like... $2.3 million next year as well. So I think they're going to keep him, especially considering he's cost controlled and he's dirt cheap right now compared to his egress. What do you do? Do you put him on wing? Do you have Trocek as your, you probably have to have him be your third center because Trocek's playing so good. He's the second center right now. So I don't think New York for Lafreniere makes a lot of sense. I do a different New York trade later on this, but let's get through it. Gooley in a second round pick. I actually do like this one a lot when looking at Caden Gooley. Shut down defensive defenseman doesn't offer a ton offensively. I think that's kind of what Anaheim needs because right now, even after shipping Drysdale, Minchikov and Zellweger are both very offensive defensemen. Minchikov is a pretty good two-way guy, but they're definitely offensive defensemen. They're going to need a shutdown defensive defenseman partner. I think Caden Gooley could potentially be that in the Ducks' top six. And when looking at it, Montreal, they're pretty set on forwards. And in terms of their defense, they do have Reinbacher and Hudson, so I think they could end up trading Gooley. But with the forward core, you reunite Caulfield and Zegris, that would be very fun to watch him as their second line center, maybe even first line center if he bounces back offensively at first line center, maybe have Suzuki be that solid second line center two-way guy, but they'd have two low-end first line centers, high-end second line centers. I could see that work out. Definitely Montreal has been talked about when talking about Zegris, and it's going to be interesting to see if anything materializes of that, obviously. The Caulfield and Zegris connection, U.S. developmental program is pretty big, so that would be pretty fun to watch. Heading to Chicago. For Lucas Reichel in Tampa Bay's first by the Hawks. Uh, I can see the logic in this. Bring him in, buy low. Reichel hasn't looked that impressive this season, and that first round pick should be hopefully outside of the top 10. I think the Lightning are they are going to miss the playoffs, in my opinion, but they won't be that bad. I don't know if I'm Chicago if I'm making like these kind of moves quite yet. Zegers isn't getting paid a lot, obviously, two more years of 5.75. I, I could maybe see them buy low on a uh, Trevor Zegers, but I think they're going to wait definitely until 
the draft because if they get a high-end pick, they might take their second center there instead of Trevor Zegras. So I don't know about that one. Casey Middlestat in a second from Brecken. Ah, uh, Casey Middlestat's playing too good right now to trade him for Se- Trevor Zegras, in my opinion. He's only two years older than Trevor Zegras. Right now, I think you just stick with Casey Middlestat, who has really proven himself to be one of the better passers in the entire NHL, in my opinion. So I think I, I would hold off on a Buffalo Casey Middlestat swap as of right now. And even if you are the Anaheim Ducks from Middlestat, he's already, what, 24 or 25, probably needs a contract extension soon. I don't think that really lines up for the Ducks either. So I'm not a big fan of that one. Also, another Montreal one from Fever and Nets. Reinbacher in a second, maybe more picks for Trevor Zegris. And similarly to the... Uh, Gooley one that I just did. This does make some sense if they don't really, if they think Gooley and Hudson is their future top pair. They're kind of trying to sell on Reinbacher, who I still think is a good prospect, good two-way eventual guy. And Anaheim needs more of a defensive defenseman, obviously, compared to Mitchikov and Zellweger, as I mentioned before. This could also be a potential Montreal trade if it were to go down. Columbus from the same guy. Columbus Zegris for Line A in a 2024 second. I don't know about that. Line A's been far too inconsistent, especially this season, and he's getting paid $8.7 million. If I'm Columbus, I would definitely do that just to get off the books of Line A's contract and get a get a guy that's three years younger in Trevor Zegras. If I'm Anaheim, that's kind of like a win-now move when looking at $8.7 million for Patrick Line A. I don't know if I would do this one. This one's a pretty interesting one from Liam. Askarov, the National Predators' top-end goalie. I, I see the logic in this. Anaheim right now, Dostal is their future goaltender. Does he have more potential than an Askarov, in my opinion? No. And when looking at Nashville, I think they lack that high, high offensive octane center. Ryan O'Reilly's been fantastic for them, but he's getting up there in age. They need that next. Him and Evangelista would be a pretty disgusting offensive duo for the next decade. So when looking at that, if Anaheim is set on Dostal, again, I don't think they do that, but I don't think you can rely 1,000% on Dostal becoming that guy. So this trade does make sense if Nashville plans on locking up UC Soros on a goddamn eight-year deal. Askarov's not going to be the starter for at least another four or five years, in my opinion, because obviously Soros is only 27 or 28 years old. So this is definitely a very interesting p- uh, trade. I think Anaheim would maybe even have to add a second round pick to that because Askarov is a top five goalie prospect in the entire NHL and has looked pretty good at the NHL level. But that is definitely interesting from Liam. We got a real funny one here from Jeff Ra. Drives down in a second. Insert the Joker laughing stand-up comedy meme here. You're really funny for that. You're really funny for that. Next up, Fabian Lysel in a first-round pick to Boston, in Zegris to Boston from Peter. <sighs> Anaheim, if I'm Anaheim, I'm not that moved by Fabian Lysel. I think he can be a solid third line forward, but I, I think the ship has sailed in terms of like two years ago when he was like the steal of the draft by Boston. I'm not that moved. And that first-round pick would have to be a 2025 first, which probably yet again will be like 26 through 32. I think Anaheim would need a more a better prospect or a proven NHL caliber guy, but I can definitely see the logic. If they add a second round pick on top of that, I would probably do it if I was the Anaheim Ducks, but right now I, I don't think it's enough considering I'm not that high on Fabian Lizell. The Canucks, Jonathan Lekaramaki in a third for Zegris. Um, in terms of if you plan on moving Zegras to the wing, or if you plan on keeping JT Miller on the wing with Pedersen and Besser, I could see you maybe buying low on a Trevor Zegras. Like Romaki did just have a fantastic world juniors. And I think he's an elite goal scorer. I think he offers something different compared to the other guys that the Canucks currently have while Zegras, while still a dynamic offensive player, I don't really think he changes the makeup of that team versus like Romaki as that go-to sniper on a power play on a first line. I don't hate this if the Canucks are trying to win right now, which this might be one of their better seasons that they're going to have over the next five years, considering their PDO. They are a little bit of a lucky team. I think they're going to be a consistent team fighting for the playoffs the next three years. But if they're ready to really go all in, maybe you package, maybe you do something around Kuzmenko in a prospect for Zegris. But right now, Lekaramaki... This would have to happen in the offseason, obviously, considering the Canucks can't trade a prospect for $5.75 million, but definitely an interesting one. If I, and if I was the Anaheim Ducks and I got an elite playmaker in the draft this year, I would look at Jonathan Lekaramaki and be like, Lekaramaki with Carlson, McTavish, 
Celebrini, that would definitely, I would do it from the Ducks end just because you get a fresh start with a guy like Lekaramaki, but definitely an interesting deal. The Detroit Red Wings get Zegras, Frosty Locks, Marco Casper, Berggren, and a second round pick to Detroit. Again, I think this one, this one does make sense. Marco Casper had a rough start in the AHL. He had like six points in his first 24 games. He's up to like 14 and 32, I think. So he's progressing okay. Obviously was the eighth or ninth overall pick in 2022. Still a high level prospect. Berggren, I think he's been up and down from the AHL, NHL level. I think he is an NHL level forward. He's only, he's 22 or 23. So you get an elite prospect, an NHL body that can turn into a solid, maybe second liner, probably more so a third liner in a second round pick. If it was a first round pick, I think I would do it from the Anaheim Ducks standpoint. Second round pick might not move me enough. I like the deal for Detroit because Zegras is definitely at this point a top six forward and you have a bunch of picks. You have, yeah, you have a bunch of picks and a bunch of prospects coming up so you can afford to trade some for an established NHL player. So I don't hate this one. That's definitely an interesting one. Philadelphia Flyers, Owen Tippett in a pick. Uh, I, I'm going to assume that this is like a second or a third round pick. Definitely an interesting one. This would be a, this would be a, the Philly Flyers kind of betting on Zegers' upside because I think Tippett right now probably is a better player. He is two years older. But when looking at this, I think he would slot very nicely into that Anaheim Ducks top six. Zegers could develop into that legit first line potential center and play with a Matt Vemichkov and just take off offensively. So this is definitely, I don't think the Philadelphia Flyers would do that this, this season for sure, considering Zegris's level of play and the fact Tippett is having a good season on a team that might end up battling for a playoff spot, might end up making it. I don't think you make this in season, but this off season, definitely if the Philadelphia Flyers miss and decide to head more towards that rebuild younger phase, I could see something like that going down. The Columbus Blue Jackets for Sillinger, Marchenko, a second and a third. This is too much in my opinion, but I I don't even know if they do Marchenko for Zegers. I think that would be something I would consider. Marchenko for Zegers, a swap like that, maybe a Marchenko in a second because Marchenko is that elite goal scoring winger that the Ducks could potentially use with their McTavish Carlson uh, center combo going forward. I think that's definitely interesting. Marchenko in a second round pick. I think you throw on Colt Sillinger, who is still young, just had a hat trick the other day, but still has a lot of promise. I don't think the Columbus Blue Jackets would do that. But Marchenko in a second would make some sense for both teams. I think Zegers has a higher ceiling than Marchenko, but Marchenko is definitely the better player as of right now. I don't think that's up for debate. New York Rangers, going back to New York Rangers, Capo Caco in a first. Both players would bloom in new homes. This is from Kyle Polito. This makes more sense than the Lafreniere one because Caco has obviously been so disappointing this season. I do agree. It would probably take a first round pick, definitely at least a second on top of that, considering the injury. This would happen in the offseason, obviously, but considering Caco might not play for the rest of the season at this point, I don't even know what the hell is going on with him. But this, this can make sense. If you're thinking about the Anaheim Ducks perspective, you get a first round pick. Let's assume the Rangers pick 20. They're going to actually pick pretty high or late this year, but 25th overall in Capo Caco, who, had, who showed signs to be a good, I still think he can be a good 50 to 60 point second liner. I know he looked like shit this year, but he had 40 points last year. I still think Capo Caco can be a very solid player. So if you get that, if you can develop him properly and you have a solid second line, reliable defensive guy, unlike a Zegris that is just like pure offense at this point, I think that definitely makes sense on top of a first round pick. Definitely something interesting to look at potentially happening this summer. Trevor Zegris is from the New York suburbs area, Scarsdale, upstate New York, but it's like right near the city. So that would be pretty cool. Buffalo, back to Buffalo. Zegris in a first for Yuri Kulich. I don't know about that one. Yuri Kulich balled out at uh, World Juniors. Yuri Kulich in a, in a second maybe could make sense, but I still think Yuri Kulich has a shit ton of potential, and I think he will be an eventual stud, so I can't say I absolutely love that. Back to the Philadelphia Flyers. I'm, I don't even know how to pronounce that name, but uh, Philly for their first Bobby Brink and Lawton. I don't know why they would take Scott Lawton. Maybe their first and Bobby Brink could make sense considering their first is probably going to be between 13th to 18th overall. And Bobby Brink, another solid young guy. I think he was a 2019 or 2020 pick having a solid rookie year. I think that could make some sense. Definitely Zegris. Again, playing on that first line one day with Matt Vemichkov, he could really realize his full potential with a winger like that would be interesting. And then lastly, going back to the Montreal Canadiens from Alexis or Alexi, uh, their first in 2025 in Philip Machar. 
that first would definitely have to be like top five, probably top 10 protected. I think that's a solid return for the Anaheim Ducks, considering I still think that pick is going to be lottery protected. Mashar, I'm not that high at him as a prospect. I thought he had a pretty good World Juniors with Slovakia. I think he can end up being a solid second liner. That's definitely something to look for if the Ducks end up getting a Celebrini type and Zegris is kind of the odd man out. But let me know in the comments, what do you think about this? What are some of these trades? Which ones were your favorite? I really like the Caden Gooley one, I'm not going to lie. But I think Montreal is probably going to hold on to him because he has taken kind of that next step this year. But I want to hear from you guys. Where do you want to see Zegris go? And what kind of player do you think Zegris is one day going to develop into? And I'll be seeing the next one.